Hi, it's Hugh Foster on the bass here. Today I'm going to be breaking down some iconic bass lines by the legendary slap bass monster Lewis Johnson aka Thunder Thumbs. This video features five tracks in chronological order, combining some of his work as a session player with cuts by the brothers Johnson. Anyway, let's get started. First off, we've got Get the Funk Out My Face from their 1976 debut album. This is a classic Brothers Johnson tune co-written by Quincy Jones, who would obviously go on to do all kinds of projects with Lewis. For this one, I'm playing my Heyman 4040 um, with the neck pickup selected uh, to sound more like a Fender Precision. I'm not actually sure what bass Lewis played on this track. He's always associated with the music man Stingray, but the album cover features him playing uh, a P bass, so that just stuck in my head, really. If anyone has any info on what bass he would have used around this time, uh, let me know in the comments. Okay, so in this one, there are only two sections, really. What I'm calling the chorus in E and the verse in G. The chorus part is very loosely based around a one chord vamp uh, with the bass hitting a low E on the one of each bar, you know, just a classic funk thing two, three, four. And then obviously extrapolating from that. As well as breaking down what I've played in the demo, I'll talk through some of the simple concepts and licks you can throw in, you know, because it's it's mostly improvised. Also, the studio version sounds like it has some overdub bass fills thrown in um, all the way through the chorus with, you know, like an envelope filter, perhaps a Mutron. That would have been the sort of thing around at the time, I think. And just doing stuff like one, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. That kind of thing. We're just going to look at what the main bass line is doing. So let's break down the chorus. One, two. Any of these component parts you can throw in wherever you like really as long as you're hitting the one you know at the start of each bar so it could be three four you know and i just kind of like just took what was there and just mixed it up obviously that takes a bit more confidence and everything but that's essentially what's going on Okay, so now let's break down what I'm calling the verse, which is the part in G. Three, four, one. Okay, when you get to this bend, that can be tricky because you're bending releasing which is not so common on bass and particularly not in the 
lower areas of the fretboards where the string tension is quite high. So that does take a bit of strength <laughs> there. Top tip, have just all your fingers on the string. Okay, and that, that can help with the actual physical effort of bending and then releasing the string. And then that little bit after, this little hammer-on bit after that phrase, does come up quite quickly and I'm not sure whether that's, you know, uh, an overdub or whether that's all part of the bass line. Towards the end of the eight bar phrase, we've got this bit here. Okay, so quite a lot of movement there. Start with three pops. And then kind of do the same thing, uh, moving down the minor pentatonic scale. This is all based around the minor pentatonic, apart from you know, those bits there, uh, which kind of suggests sort of Dorian mode. But let's not get too heavy on the <laughs> on the theory in this one. Anyway, we've got to move on. Let's get on to the next tune. Next up we have Get On The Floor from Michael Jackson's 1979 album Off The Wall. Lewis Johnson actually had a co-write credit on this, which if you know anything about MJ is a very rare thing to happen. <laughs> but anyway, the bass part itself, it's iconic. I don't think you can take an interest in funk and slap bass and not come across this tune. There are two basic parts, a chorus and a verse. By the way, what makes this one interesting is that the original recording is double tracked. so. Lewis used his trusty Stingray for the main take and then layered another take on top using his Alembic Series 1. I actually had a go at recreating that kind of sound by using the bridge pickup on my Heyman. And yeah, I think I got close. If you can, by the way, try and get hold of the multi-tracks for this tune and other tunes from Off The Wall. They are available out there. I'm not going to say how you can get hold of them. Uh, maybe ask a friend. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much going on in those multi tracks that is not obvious when you listen to the released version. Not just in the bass part, which is double tracked, as I mentioned. There's a clavinet part, for example, played by Greg Fillingaines that I didn't even know existed until I listened to the multi track version. And it's just like, yeah, once you know it's there, you listen to the uh, released version, and yeah, you can just about hear it there. And it just kind of just sitting as a nice little groovy little bed. Anyway, I've talked too much. Let's break this down, starting with. The chorus. One, two, three. Every now and then I, I, I still go through periods of re-evaluating just how I play this bass line and how, how he played it. Listening to the isolated bass parts really, really helped narrow down what he's actually doing in this one. Um, and really how much he's using the thumb and how little he's using the finger. It's actually only at the very end where he actually gets the finger involved at all on that pop right at the end. Everything else is with the thumb. And to do that, you've really just got to commit. Uh, which obviously is easier said than done. But yeah, I think, you know, part of Lewis's playing style is like, it's aggression, it's like big movements, which you don't see in, um, you know, every slap bass sort of style. Uh, but it really does help if you're just really, like, really going for it. Okay, so um, yeah. That bit there, I always thought there was a little, you know, maybe like a ghosted pop there, but it's all with the thumb. You can tell, like, if you listen to, listen closely to any line he plays, you know, it's just got a different quality to it. It's still going to be aggressive, but that's got a different quality to, to that, you know? Okay, so now let's break down the verse. 
So this is a simpler two bar phrase, but there's still a lot going on. So here we go. One, two, three. So yeah, lots going on in that first bar at least. And for years, I've got to say again, like with the chorus, I was always second guessing what was going on in that in that first bar. So you start with a definite pop on the B flat, third fret of the first string, and then just make your way ghosting with the thumb down to a G, third fret on the E string. And that's basically all there is to that. Um, and then after that, You've got everything with the thumb, the rest of the bar. Okay, so put those two bits together. And again. Okay. Thankfully, the second bar is simpler. Just slap, pop, slap, pop. Okay, but be mindful to keep those nice and short, and that's gonna really help with how it sits in the groove. You don't want... It's just not the same, is it? That's, you know, I think that's kind of what makes that bit particularly cool. Okay, so next we have Stomp, uh, another classic Brothers Johnson tune from their 1980 album Light Up the Night, co-written by Rod Temperton, another longtime collaborator, particularly with Michael Jackson. Apart from the uh, bass solo section, this is the first one I featured that is played with the fingers. Um, there's a lot to get through in this one. I've tried to include every section, uh, basically more or less what happens in each section. So let's just get through all of them. All right, first of all, we've got the verse. One, two, three, four. That's all there is to it. Last time. So pretty straightforward. The one difficulty really is jumping around a lot. But yeah, I wouldn't say it's too tricky. Also, by the way, um, for all the slap bass stuff, I've EQ'd my Stingray by boosting the bass and treble ever so slightly, keeping the mid flat actually, no, not cutting it. For finger style in this tune, I am boosting bass, boosting the mid slightly, cutting the treble slightly, just the, you know, just a slight turn of the um, of the knob. Um, and that just sits a bit more nicely in the mix, I find. Anyway, let's go into the pre-chorus. One, two, three, four. Cool. 
kind of just based around a sort of like two bar phrase really there um with some you know semi quavers 16th notes thrown in but yeah that not again not too tricky what i failed to mention in this bit however is that the song briefly modulates from g minor to e minor in this section uh, just a really clever bit of songwriting from rod temperton so just do bear that in mind when you are playing this section cool all right let's get straight into the chorus one two three four Again, I'm cutting down the sections just to get through them. Nothing too tricky there apart from maybe just the rhythm. Uh, and watch out for the second time you go through, you know, the four bar sequence, you push onto that G uh, on the last eighth note of the previous bar. So three, four, one. But yeah, apart from that, I don't know, it should be fairly straightforward. Anyway, let's get into the bit that you're all here for. <laughs> and that is the um, the slapped bass solo in this one. I've cut this down to just uh, however many bars, how many bars is it? Um, eight bars, whereas in the original, it's something like 32. Um, by the way, I've done a transcription for the whole song uh, for this one. It's available to download on my website, so go and check that out if you'd like that. But anyway, here is the bass solo. A little bit brighter, by the way. You know, boost the treble, boost the bass, mid, just sitting there. One, two, three, four. So there's quite a lot going on in that, but there are some repeated phrases. The first four bars in particular, you know, nice and simple, relatively speaking. Okay, yeah. So that kind of just sets a nice precedent. And um, in the full version, it just does, you know, just keep sort of expanding upon that. But the last four bars are where it gets really sort of busy. So let's just look at that again. by the way that kind of kind of just keeps going like I, I like to imagine he just kept going and you know they decided to just fade it out I think that's <laughs> you can hear like it fading out and then the overdubbed uh, finger style part comes in over it um <laughs> so yeah I just I like to imagine he's like he, they, they couldn't stop him they just had to turn the turn the fader down let's move on to the next section synth solo uh again this has been cut down but yeah, basically, it's just a one bar phrase that just like it's got a slight shuffle to it, which is quite nice. Three, four. Just sitting in one position. It's really fun to play after you've done like something so busy as well. And yeah. Um, not much to add for that one, I don't think. And the outro, which is fun because it's one of those lines that jumps around the fretboard a little bit. One, two. as much as you can of those slides 
the um the sort of descending like it's so ghosted it's barely there i don't think you need to think too much about what notes you're playing as long as you know where you're starting and where you're finishing third fret here and then third fret here and yeah and there's always a slight difference in that second bar or or first time again or so that's nice just a nice little sort of variation each time but yeah don't think too much about the notes just think about the gun as a sort of like thing and I think you'll get it that's just so fun to do as well Anyway, I think that covers everything in Stomp. If I've missed something, do let me know. So, I Keep Forgetting by Michael McDonald. And who hasn't heard this bass line in some form or another? The original was released in 1982, um, but it's been sampled a few times, 26 to be precise, according to who sampled. And maybe you know it from Regulate by Warren G and Nate Dogg, uh, or maybe you know the original. Or maybe you know a different version. I don't know. I'm not the boss of you. Anyway, this is another one that's played entirely with the fingers. And to me, it shows another side of Lewis Johnson's playing. It still sounds like him, but it's, you know, relatively reserved, but it's still, you know, funky as hell. Let's see what's going on in this one, starting with the chorus. One, two, three, four. Straight away in first bar, a nice little um, slightly accented hammer on uh, in E minor. So we're going, you know, like D to E and then back down to an E. And then that second bar is nice and syncopated. One, two, eight, 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 eight. you know, like, yeah, really, really cool. Um, and then we've also got this fill, which varies each time. But yeah, we'll just go with the very first instance of it, which is like this. Three, four, one. And again, a bit slower. Three, four, one. Yeah, really, really cool. And just using, you know, E minor pentatonic to its full potential there, I think. My tip for this one is to think of the chorus in E minor and the verse in G major which is essentially is the same thing if you look at you know like the uh, the makeup of each of those keys they're relative to one another but you know G major is nice and bright E minor a bit darker and just think about you know you keep you're in you know like this is your home now whereas in the chorus that's your home now we're here okay and, you know, the pre-chorus does help us get back into that minor mindset later. Anyway, here's the verse broken down. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then we're into the pre-chorus there. So yeah, the pre-chorus is then, I think we're getting back into E minor here. So we're starting on 
A minor, three, four. Just that one tricky rhythm in the pre-chorus. By the way, let's go back to the verse. Nah, we don't need to worry about the verse. The verse is simple. <laughs> okay, let's just break down the first couple of bars of that pre-chorus again. Three, four. Okay. So a little bit busy, a little bit fiddly there, but not too bad if you just, you know, work on just nice controlled movements with the right hand. And the tempo of this one means that it's not too tricky. It's a nice little one to sit in and groove. So last of all, we've got Reach Out by George Duke. Personally, I love the album that featured this track. It's uh, from 1983's Guardian of the Light. Uh, it's, it's cheesy at times, but the bass playing is always on point. Side note, by the way, if you haven't already, do check out the George Duke Band live in Tokyo. It's a full concert, the full thing's on YouTube. It's absolutely killer. It's full of great playing and showmanship, you know, like George is in a white tuxedo, <laughs> strutting around the stage. Um, all the band are on, are on point. One particular highlight for me is Lewis's absolutely beastly solo in a tune called Silly Fighting, where he goes in so hard, he breaks a string. I mean, that's commitment, right? Also. Just, you know, the outfits are on point, aren't they? Uh, Lewis is wearing a single black leather glove, white cowboy boots. I mean, great. <laughs> anyway, back to this tune, Reach Out, uh, another classic from this album. Uh, let's break down the chorus. One, two. Quite simple apart from that fill at the beginning. Um, also, by the way, it doesn't have to all be with the thumb. But that does seem to be, from the quality of it, that does seem to be what he's doing on the recording. But feel free to mix it up. You know, classic thing would be use the thumb and the finger for the octave. In that concert I was just talking about, uh, he does tend to use the finger a bit more. Um, but yeah, just a different quality to the sound. I do quite like that, to be honest. And if you really commit to it, you're going to be fine. Let's get into the interlude, play with the fingers. One, two, three, four. The first bar is always the same. And then the second bar. That's the first time. Second time. Third time. And then the last time. I don't think this is in the original, but every time you get to that C, I've added some sort of shakes, which are a bit like vibrato. 
but where you move quickly between two frets like that i don't think it's essential it's just it um mimics the vibrato on the synth that is doubling that line let's get into the verse which is a one bar phrase but it just fits the song so perfectly and personally i find it really really fun to play three four all there is to the verse it's great it's just you know you've got this one bar if you're being fancy you could call it an ostinato it's just a fancy way to say it's a repeated phrase and again it's all about committing for ages i thought this bit here was actually a hammer-on which is close but i think you know that the quality of it you can hear the attack of each of those so i feel like that's definitely all with the thumb and that is in keeping with lewis's style you know, really just going for it. And it's just all about that aggression, that intense attacking style. Um, and yeah, just keep that going for eight bars or seven bars and then the eighth bar. Nice and simple, just to give yourself a little rest. <laughs> so that's just about it from me today. Let's have some honorable mentions for bass lines that didn't quite make the cut. Not on merit or anything, it's just, you know, I didn't have time to work on, <laughs> work on all of them. Give Me The Night by George Benson. All the tracks with uh, <laughs> Aretha Franklin in the 80s. Lewis Johnson was one of the bass players who worked with her a lot in that decade, as well as Marcus Miller. Almost any other cut from Off The Wall or the ones where it's not synth bass on Thriller. And there's probably loads more which uh, I've forgotten. Is there any you'd like to, to hear broken down at some point? Let me know in the comments and maybe I'll get around to doing a second video in this series. I don't know, we'll see. I've got to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for helping me decide on um you know who to cover in this video i did a similar video last year about prints go check that out if you haven't already you know five prints baselines done in a similar way and if you do like what i do here on youtube doing educational base stuff please consider signing up to become a supporter on patreon you know i want to be able to do videos like this more often and your support really really does help me achieve that goal anyway i'm going to sign off for today it's been Hugh Foster on the bass here. Let me know how you guys get on with this one in the comments below and I'll see you next time.